Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Patty. I go by Patty Mac Makes everywhere online. In today's video I want to give you a check-in on like a progress report, a progress update on the patchwork quilt that I've been working on. I thought it would be fun to check in here and there and just kind of give you a little bit of a status update so you can see where things are and I thought it would be I don't know fun and interesting for you if I showed you how I do certain things. So today we're going to talk about basting and I am currently in the process of basting my quilt. If you're newer to the process and you don't know what that means, quilt basting is uh, the part of the quilting process where we are securing our layers. So in your quilt project you're going to have the colorful quilt top, you're going to have the quilt batting that goes in the center, that's like your in-between layer, and then your backing fabric. And before we take the quilt to the machine, we want to make sure that all three of those layers are securely fastened to each other so that as we start running that sandwich, we call it the quilt sandwich, through the machine, all of those layers will stay in place. We don't want fabrics to be shifting here, there, and everywhere as we run them through the machine for the quilting process. The last thing you want to do is run several rows or however it is you're going to do your quilting. You don't want to be doing, you know, two hours of that only to realize that you've somehow folded your backing fabric and now you've got like a tuck that messes things up or Maybe it's shifted and when you go to trim to even up your fabric, now you don't have enough backing to cover your back properly. I mean, it's just a mess. <laughs> so we want to make sure that everything is secure and in place. And I personally use the tried and true method of uh, pins. And I get those funny little pins that are like the little bent safety pins and I do those. and. Generally, it'll take me two, maybe three sessions, depending on the size of the project. You know, one session if it's small, but you know, for a bed size quilt, usually it's gonna take me two or three times to go ahead and get everything properly pinned together. And I just wanted to just show you how I do it. Um, I have in the past uh, put things over top of my uh, kitchen island which is my work table uh, but this time I just I'm doing it all on the floor it just seemed to work out better and that's how I'm doing it and it's you know it gave me an opportunity to um, straighten and flatten things out you're going to be smoothing your fabric quite a bit as you're doing it you want it to be nice and flat and you know looking good as you put it together you don't want it all bunched up and all of that because if it's bunched up when you run it through the machine, it's going to be bunched up when you quilt and nobody wants that. I will tell you that for my backing fabric, um, I didn't want to buy anything. I'm like, well, let me back up. I'm actually uh, undertaking a no spend challenge, which I've never done anything like that. I'm not exactly the queen of minimalism. And I do have some issues with the spending and overspending, and I want to work on that. So uh, as part of my no spend challenge with my fabric and quilting supplies, I didn't want to have to go buy backing fabric. And, you know, and I didn't want to just put any old thing on the back either. I wanted it to work. So uh, I have been saving older sheets and uh, like back in the day when my nieces and nephews were little we had a, like a cot and they could stay on the cot and you know so we had sheets for that they're all grown they're everywhere so nobody comes and stays on the cot anymore and in fact we got rid of the cot years ago uh, but i did keep the sheets because they were you know nice fabric so i found what i feel like is a really nice contrast to go on the back. This particular quilt is all pinks and yellows and that type of thing and for my backing I went with a sage green and I thought that really works because there's no green at all none whatsoever in the front. 
So to have that sage green on the back, I just felt like, ooh, that's, that's a really nice uh, compliment. Because, you know, reds and greens on the color wheel are opposite, so they're complementary. Anyway, uh, I uh, got probably three-fourths, maybe a little over three-fourths before I stopped pinning the other night. My hand was bothering me, so I had to stop. Um, I've had a couple of days to rest it, so I'm, I'm ready to finish it. And uh, I just sort of folded it up, and it's on the chair over here, so I'm going to flip the camera. I'm going to let you see that. And then I'm going to just um, set this camera up and do like a time lapse where you can see me just putting it out on the floor in all of its glory. Uh, so uh, the size of the quilt. So I, I sort of bristle at following all of the rules. And uh, so this is not like, uh, you know, perfectly standard sized quilt and it is what it is. I don't even know what the finished measurement is on the top of my head. I'll measure it when I trim it. Um, but it very closely follows the sizing that you would have for a twin sized bed quilt. And uh, like the sheet that I used, I used a flat sheet and it's twin size. And I mean, it just about took the whole sheet. And I, in my stash, had a twin sized a piece of quilt batting and it was like the perfect size so there's like one side where there's a little excess so that'll get trimmed off and then you know the rest of it is good to go so all right let me just uh, show you how I've got it on the chair <laughs> and because you can just you know if you can't finish it just carefully pick up your stuff and make sure that it you know kind of stays neat and you can put it out of the way. Now, if you're working on the floor, you want to make sure that your floor is clean. You don't want to have, you know, like a dirty carpet or like if people have been tracking stuff in or if you've got a lot of animals and fur, that type of stuff. But um, we don't get a lot of traffic in here. And in fact, my carpeting is only a couple of weeks old. It is brand spanking new. So it's pretty clean and there's no animals. I haven't had animals since my uh, animals died back in 2016. So that's a long story. I love animals, but I kind of don't have the capacity to take on anything else, uh, nor do I have the budget to handle the vet bills and the food. I, I mean, it's just, uh, it's gotten ridiculous what it cost to try to have a dog now. I'd love to have a dog. Believe me, I love them so much. And mom would love to have a cat, but you know what? <laughs> Who can afford it? After that uh, tangent, uh, let's get back to the quilting. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show it to you in the chair. And uh, then I'm gonna, I guess, probably put the camera back a little bit further and uh, just let you see me rolling it out <laughs> and then you can enjoy watching me crawl around on the floor to secure the the pins okay let's get to it all right I'm just gonna swing around and you can see the room and there's my desk and that's my chair and uh, yeah so the green blob that's the project there it is and I just carefully folded it over and put it in the chair until I was ready to work on it Again, I mean, let me just say, uh, you know, these projects are, are huge. They're large. So trying to complete all of these things in one day, I think that's, I think that's pushing it pretty hard. And, uh, you know, who has time to do all of that in one day? I mean, I know I don't, and I'm sure you don't either. So anyway, it's been just kind of hanging out there for a couple of days. Let's uh, get it out and get it uh, down on the floor and finish it up.
Let me give you just kind of a close up in case you're not sure about what is going on here. Uh, basically, this is what we're using are these little special safety pins that we use in quilting and see how they're bent. That's not a mistake. <laughs> That's what we want. Because what we're going to do is um, stab it through the three layers and see how it's kind of turned up. That's what you want. Then it's easy for you to uh, remove, add and remove to your layers. And in this corner piece, I'm going to turn it over and see how the pin is through the back. So what has happened is we have now secured our uh, backing and our binding, our binding, our quilt batting and our, our top, our quilt top. And so all three of these layers are secured. So when I run this through the machine, it's not going to shift and go crazy. I mean, it'll move a little bit just because, you know, it, it is what it is, but I'll use the walking foot and I'll take my time and it should be fine. Um, when you go to secure with your pin basting, you want to have it every so many inches so that you're secured every, you know, within a reasonable amount of space so that things aren't going to move around. So I basically put one essentially in the center of each block. So whether it was a square or the rectangle, it just got one pin. I think that's adequate, especially because this is a smaller quilt being, you know, twin sized, but you can see each square has its own uh, pin and that holds everything together. Um, yeah, so when I started, you saw me down at that end and then I went over and, and got my uh, old uh, cutting mat. I don't use this all that frequently anymore. Um, I wind up just using that small one, that the little gray one that's on the table all the time. For quilting, I don't really need such a large thing, but you know, when I started out, uh, I didn't really know what I was going to sew, and so I had these large mats, uh, you know, and I still keep them, you know, I'm not going to get rid of them, they're still good. Uh, so anyway, they come in very handy when I go to do this type of stuff because, you know, my floor is carpeted. So what can happen is when you go to stick the pin through, it can um, attach to the carpet. <laughs> Don't really want that. So if I put this hard backing underneath, uh, it just lets the sharp point of the pin go through and then you can easily bring it back up. So that's why I went over and got that. Uh, once I'm quilted, I'll use these large cutting mats underneath and I'll square up on the on the carpeting, on the floor. I'll show you. And I do that just because I only have a very limited workspace and, you know, it's still, even though it's a smaller quilt as quilts go, it's still kind of big for what I have. So I just wind up doing a lot of my work on the floor. And I know that doesn't work for everybody, but it's just how I do things. So, okay, we're ready to take this over to be quilted, which I think I'll start on this evening. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, stitch in the ditch on uh, this horizontal. So all of the horizontal seams where I put the rows together, I'm going to do a stitch in the ditch and just a straight line. and. Then I think what I might do is go on to like that wavy line. I think they call it the serpentine stitch. I think I'll serpentine stitch uh, down the center. So everywhere that I have the horizontal seam where the rows are put together, I'll just do the straight stitch in the ditch. And then right in between, I'll do a serpentine stitch right down the middle. And that would give me stitches every two and a half inches and I think that's I think that's perfectly adequate that should hold it uh, everything all together perfectly well because you know that's what you're doing with the quilting is you're using the quilting stitches to permanently affix 
all three of your layers together. Now, of course, you know, there is, you know, big time artistry in the the quilting of itself, but you know, I <laughs> I'm on a, a small machine and I just do straight line quilting and go right on through. And you know, for me it works fine. I think the free motion quilting is incredible. I mean that is like that's its own art form, to be honest. That is a whole other level, avenue, aspect, whatever, of uh, quilting. So I don't I don't do any of that. I don't foresee doing it. Uh, just, I don't know, just, it feels like it would take a really long time to finish things and you almost need to have that big setup to do it. So I'll just stick to my, my uh, tried and true methods. Okay, that's enough rambling. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put the camera back on the tripod and uh, what I'll do is I'll get up and I will uh, unfurl because you can see I rolled it. Now when I go to quilt, I also roll my fabrics like that. Uh, the rolling makes it one easier to manage uh, just like from steering, you know, because you got to steer the fabric through, uh, but also it compresses a lot of size and it's easier to get through the small throat of a domestic sewing machine. Okay, uh, let me just um, go back over to put you back on the tripod and uh, we'll um, get this uh, puppy up off of the ground and I'll let you see it uh, in its entire uh, basted glory. How about that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't go anywhere. <laughs> I get asked about thread uh, and what thread I like and all of that and typically what I use is the RFL and I use the Armine color and let me just scroll over here and you can see I have that loaded right now in the uh, the Kenmore and it's just uh, you know it's not a white it's not a beige uh, but it's a nice neutral and Gosh, honest to goodness, it goes, it goes with everything. So that's my default thread that I use. But let me tell you, I wish when Blueprint closed up that I had uh, really stockpiled more of these thread sets because this thread is beautiful and I'm still sick to my stomach that I didn't uh, spend the money and get these when they were on the super duper sale because at the very end they put this stuff on the deepest discount and you know I was penny wise and pound foolish and I should have just gone ahead and bought you know everything I could in these kits anyway um, I have this stuff in this kit this is not the correct it's a succulents that's the greens obviously so I don't know I got them all everywhere doesn't matter I can't buy it again so I'm not too worried about knowing exactly what the colors are unfortunately I can't replace them now but anyway let me not wax on about thread uh, I have these different uh, reds and that peachy orange and that mauvey shade all of that and I'm going to pick a thread from here to use for uh, quilting this quilt. And uh, what I'm laying the thread on here that you can see in the background, this is the 
smaller version. So this is the table runner size that I did. I made a small sample because I needed to take pictures for the blog post and I just went ahead and made the small project to do what I needed to do there. But anyway, here's all of the, uh, the thread colors. So I don't know which one I'm going to pick. I haven't really decided. I'm leaning towards that bright pink that's a uh, second from the right. But you know the mauve shade might be nice because I haven't used any of the mauve shades. So it might be nice to use the mauve on this particular uh, quilt project. So we'll just see. I haven't fully decided. They're all beautiful. And look at the sheen. Isn't that gorgeous? It's that Pima thread. And all of this was made in America. And uh, Pima is like, has something to do with the length of fiber. And it's the most high quality cotton you can get. And it does cost more money, but it has something to do with the quality of the length of the fiber or something. I don't remember. <sighs> but it's, you know, gone now. Gone to the annals of history. <laughs> Anyway, here's uh, here's the full on, we'll call it the beast. There she is. Isn't she gorgeous? And you can see I did like a rough chop on the edges just to kind of take some of those um, craziness off. I'll worry about you know, squaring it all up once it's quilted. And over here is the excess. What I'm going to go ahead and do is trim off. I'll leave a good, I don't know, five or six inches over there to the right of the quilt, uh, but go ahead and remove the excess just so it's easier for me to manage going through the machine. And there she is. She's ready to go. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So what I could do is uh, if I quilt maybe a section at a time, maybe if I just take uh, you know six rows at a time, and get everything quilted uh, in three sessions I could have it done so that's probably what I'll do then I don't you know totally exhaust myself on it and then I can pick out what I want to use for binding so okay moving along uh, you know guys that's that's the video for today I just wanted you to kind of see a little bit of the the basting process and how I do that and you know, people ask, and I thought maybe you would enjoy seeing that. Uh, what else can I tell you? This isn't basting related, but on this Ruby Star stuff, a lot of times I've started leaving the salvages on. So you can see what that reverie that actually goes with that cloud looking, this pink and orange cloud looking material. Um, yeah, you know, the. The selvages are so fun. I just have left some of them on, like that one up there with the yellow over here. Yeah, I left it on. Why not? It's kind of fun, I think. So that's the only blue in the uh, project. And I did, I, well, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. I'm looking now. This one has a little hint of blue. And there is a little hint of green here. But predominantly, we're looking at shades uh, ranging from the red over to the yellow spectrum if you were to look on your color wheel. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I, hope that, uh, I hope that gave you a little bit of useful, helpful information. And I hope you'll stick around and see how this quilt finishes out. And I know I'm excited about it. So, okay, ladies, until next time, happy quilting. Just keep going. And I know a lot of you have shared that you have gobs and gobs of UFOs and you're overwhelmed and you're trying to get stuff, you know, kind of going there. Let me just tell you, just pick one. Just pick one, pull it out, and stay with it. Just work on it until it's completely done. Just stick with it and you'll get it finished. And when you complete that one, go to the next one. Just do it that way. You want to finish your projects. You don't want to have baskets and baskets of UFOs. That is not good. We want our stuff finished. 
So after this one, um, I think what I'll do next is pull out the Bauhaus. I have a completed Bauhaus. I'm going to do a little bit of a pieced backing and I'll show you all of that, but we'll get this one done first. <laughs> okay, that's all for today. Thank you as always for being here and until next time, all of my lovely friends, happy quilting and I'll see you around YouTube.